Let's give this landscape shot some more intense sunset tones and we're going to only use Lightroom for that. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, we are going to start with the basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel. And right away, I want this image to be very well saturated. And a good starting point for that is to change the profile from a DB color to a DB landscape. As you can see, this will bring up the base saturation of the image. And now we can continue with the tonal adjustments. Looking at this program, this is quite well exposed already. Still, I want to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to bring up the shadows because I feel like they are a bit too dark and I want to have some more visible details in those darker areas. I'm also going to raise the blacks for the same effect, just so the darker areas become a little brighter. Okay, that's nice already, but we can further brighten up the shot. Looking at this program, you can see there is some room left right here in the brightest areas. We can push the histogram further to the right by bringing up the whites slider. As we increase the whites, make sure to pay close attention to the histogram because we don't want to overexpose it. We just want to make it brighter, push the contrast, but don't overdo it. Right here, that's a nice spot and I'm quite happy with the exposure of the image at this point. After adjusting the exposure, what I want to do next is to adjust the white balance. Since now we have a better idea of what the image looks like. As my goal is to introduce more of these warmer sunset tones, we want to make use of the temperature slider and bring it up. So let's raise it. I'm going to raise it quite heavily so we have some nice rich warm tones in this image. I think right around here is a great spot. We still have some blue tones left in the foreground and in the darkest parts of the sky, but the mountains do have a nice natural color tone and the highlights feel much warmer at this point. What I want to do as well is to slightly bring down the tint to get rid of that very subtle magenta color cast which is going on in this image, but dropping the tint like this should help a lot. I also want this image to look very sharp and clear. So I'm going to bring up the texture. This will just sharpen the image. I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which will boost, which will boost the mid-tones contrast. Then I'm slightly going to bring up the dehaze just for a little more punch. And I'm also going to add some vibrance because we want this image to be well saturated. This is looking Perfect. Now let's compare the image before real quick. You can see exposure wise we have more details in the shadows while not overdoing it with the highlights. Also the white balance was the first step introducing these warmer sunset tones which we are aiming for for this scene. Now let's focus on a few areas more locally and as always we are going to do that with some masking. So I'm going to open up the masking panel and the most important thing for this shot is the sky. So right away, let me create a sky selection mask. As you can see, Lightroom does have some trouble properly selecting the sky. We do have parts of the mountain selected, which might lead to some problems. So we need to be really, really careful when working with this mask. The first thing I want to do on the sky is to make it darker, but I don't want to make the whole sky darker. I just want to tone down the top part without affecting the brightest areas. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and I'm going to basically subtract the brightest parts right here. Once you set up the mask, all I'm going to do is to simply drop the exposure. I'm going to drop it very gently because the sky mask is far from perfect. And if we would to bring it down even further, this would make the mask visible. And we don't want to do that. But we can further continue working with different sky masks to improve this effect. So I'm going to use another sky mask. This time I'm only going to change the far left side. So I'm subtracting a linear gradient, getting rid of everything on the right side like this. And what I want to do in here is to further bring down the exposure. Again, only using tiny adjustments, but this really helps to make the sky look more interesting. All right, now we made the sky darker. Let's also work on the brighter parts. I'm using yet another sky selection mask. And again, we need to subtract a linear gradient. This time I'm going to subtract all these darker tones because I just want to target the brighter parts on the right side. And what I'm going to do in here is to bring up the temperature, introducing more yellow tones. I'm using smaller adjustments to not overdo this effect. And then let's use one final sky selection mask this time I'm not modifying it. I'm using the whole sky because I want to add some more red tones to everything in here. 
And how I'm doing this is by using the tone curve. I'm not adjusting the point curve right here. What I'm going to do is to head into the red channel and I'm picking up the point for the highlights and I'm dragging it very carefully to the left side, which will introduce more red tones to the sky this way. I think that's already a bit too much. Let's tone it down a little bit like this, but I think this is a very good spot. Also, I think we could overall bring up the saturation of the sky some more. So let's do that. And that should be it for the sky adjustments. Next up, I also want to work a little bit on the foreground. Uh, let me use a linear gradient targeting pretty much all of the foreground like this. I want to make these snowflakes on the ice more visible. Before I do that, I also want to subtract this stone right here in the center. We can do that rather easily subtracting an objects mask just make sure to activate the rectangle select mode right here and then just draw a rectangle around that rock as you can see this works really really nice so all we need to do now to make these snowflakes a little more visible is to add some contrast which will make the dark areas darker and the brighter areas brighter we can further improve this effect by making the shadows darker I really like how this much contrast looks on this spot. And while we're at it, why not also drop the temperature, introducing some more blue tones to the foreground. I think that works nice as some color contrast. Okay, I think I also want to focus on that rock in the center. Let me use an objects mask for that. Again, just drawing a rectangle around that rock. What I want to do, I want to add some more highlights to the top of it, which will give it a more 3D-like appearance. So I need to subtract a linear gradient, taking out the dark part of the rock that lies in the shadows like this. And with the rest of what I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure. And just like that, we made the rock look more 3D. I think we could also bring up the whites a little more just to add some nice highlights to this spot. All right, finally, let's work on the landscape in the back. Therefore, I'm using another linear gradient and I'm covering pretty much all of that landscape like this. Of course, we don't want to affect the sky, so we need to subtract a sky mask here. And in this part of the image, I want to bring up the whites. I also want to bring up the shadows. And I do want to introduce some texture and clarity to make this part look sharper. And I do think we need to tone down the saturation a little bit. Let's bring it down like this. Otherwise the colors might look a bit too unnatural. And then I think that's it. The only thing that's bothering me is the strange sky mask, which is leaving parts of the sky within this mask. We can try further adjusting it, subtracting a color range mask, and let's click right in here. This seems to work quite nicely. I'm going to activate the overlays so we can see where the mask is active. Right here in the mountains, we did mask out some areas. With that color range mask, I'm going to add them back in using a brush. And now I'm just brushing over them roughly. All right, but that's looking great so far. Now that's it for the masking. Let me turn off all the masks so we can get a better idea. This is what we started with after the basic adjustments. And this is the image with masking applied. The image does look much more interesting, especially the sky, but now comes the most important part of this editing process, the color grading. So let's close the masking panel. Let's go down into the color mixer and I wanna work on the saturation for a moment. That means I'm going to bring up the orange saturation. I'm also going to bring up the yellow tones and let's even raise the blue tones. This might be a bit too much, but we can always tone it down later on. That's looking pretty good. I'm also going to add some split toning, which helps a lot introducing these sunset tones. I'm going to start with the highlights because those are the most important tonal areas of the image. When it comes to the color grading, we want these highlights to be warm. So we're going to set up the hue in that way. I'm going to use a very, very warm color tone somewhere in the orange range, almost going into the reds. And I'm going to pump up the saturation like crazy. So let's go really, really high like this. And instantly it looks much, much better. Of course, this is a really intense look. Might not be for everyone, but I really like how this looks on this winter scene. 
Of course, at this point, we can play around with a little bit of color contrast using the midtones and the shadows to balance the image a little more. So let's go into the midtones, and instead of some warmer tones, we are going to apply a cold color. So set up the hue. Let's go right here, and I'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit until we can actually see the color kicking in right around here. Perfect. Then I'm doing the same for the shadows. Again, set up the hue to something cold right around here and gently raise the saturation. Perfect. I think I can push this image a little more using the global color wheel as well. So let's click on this icon right here and let's add some more warmth globally. Therefore, let's set up the hue and I'm going with the same warm color tone from before, somewhere in the orange range right around here. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation. All right, this is looking really, really good. Now you might think the purple tones are a little bit overwhelming and you're right with that. But I'm going to change that in the calibration tab because what I'm going to do with most of my images is to bring down the blue primary hue. This will make the blue tones look more cyan, but it will also affect the warmer red tones. So just watch what happens when I bring down the blue primary hue. I'm going to drop it quite a bit and let me deactivate the calibration settings to see the difference from before with a very heavy purple color cast to after with a nice blue tone against these really good looking warmer tones of the highlights. We can further push this by bringing up the saturation here. Again, I'm using quite heavy amounts, but I think for this scene, it fits. All right, right around here looks great. And that's it for the color grading. Looks so much better. Now we only need to do a few more things. First off, I want to sharpen this image. So let's open up the details panel. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Very important, apply masking because you don't want to sharpen everything. I'm going to hold on all key while adjusting the masking slider. You can see right at this point is where the sky won't be sharpened. That's really important. Also, I don't think the foreground needs that much sharpening. Right around here is a good spot. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening as well. This is looking great. Now, there are a few sensor spots left, which we can remove using the remove tool. Once in here, I'm going to use the heel brush. Let's click on visualize spots so we can see where the sensor spots are located. And then I'm just going to brush over all these dots right here. All right, this should be it. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this little Lightroom color grading tutorial will be helpful for your upcoming sunset images. If you have any questions about the editing or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.